Hi everyone. What I want to talk about today is press fitting a stem bearing using an H clamp. Now this particular clamp, you'll see it right here, is a three quarter inch. So what that refers to is the length of pipe and then the threaded end that went into this section right there. This other end here just moves back and forth depending on where these three little tabs are set. And you can see they've had a lot of pressure on it a few times with, with the marks that bit into the pipe. Take a look at this photograph. It's how I set it up on my wheelchair. The bearing is already inside of the wheelchair stem and it has the tension ring for this particular model in there already so the bearing is lined up ready to go. Now I want you to take a look at this second photograph. This is how it's set up without having the wheelchair impede the view. So the two extra parts you're looking at are a scrap length of the pipe. So the circumference or else the diameter of it matches the bearing that's specific for my wheelchair. And then I just matched up the washers with the pipe right here. For the washer at the bottom, I measured what the wheelchair size was and then found a washer that was about a quarter inch in larger diameter. There is one more part that you could use to do this that would make it even easier. That would be to buy a bolt that is about four inches long and then use your pipe cutter to cut off the threads and the cap at the other end so you're only left with a barrel for all purposes. And then if you took that bolt and epoxied it here on the end and then drilled these two holes to be the same size. So my bearing is 5 8 inch. So I would need to make this a 5 8 inch hole. And this one as well. And then you epoxied it onto the clamp here. It would mean that it would line up the bearing and the bearing would go in straight each and every time. When, when I did the video here, I had put it in on just a very slight, slight incline, like a little sliver was still showing there. So I just needed to tap the hammer about three times to, on this, to finish pushing it into place and close that little bit of a gap. The other thing I want you to draw attention to is the little bit of thread here. Bearings aren't that tall. So you count one, two, three, four threads. That means that turning the handle four times, one, two, three, four, is all you need to do in order to seat the bearing. How you're going to know it's reached its home is this won't turn anymore. It'll get really hard to turn and you'll have reached the maximum point that you can do it. Now that I've given you all the background information, I want to offer you the video of me actually doing this uh, to my wheelchair. So here we start at the point where the H clamp is on my wheelchair already. You can see as I begin to turn it, I 
slipped it a little bit and that's why I talked about adding a bolt to make this line up. It would keep it straight and on track to avoid this type of thing from happening. I'm not saying it's necessary because you'll see here that with a few more turns I've had success and that the bearing is now press fit into place. So there's the option of the hydraulic press. I made a video about how I built my hydraulic press a few months back. Then I'll put the link for it in the description. This is certainly an alternative that's much less expensive. The H clamp, that is the red ends, this and the end here, was around $25. This piece of three-quarter black pipe here, that was about five dollars. And then this length right here, someone had asked Home Depot to cut the pipe for them. That length was actually scrap and the store staff just cut it for me to the size they thought would work. In fact, they made two cuts. This was the one that worked. Washers aren't expensive. You're looking at about a quarter for this one, this one, and this guy right here. So for me, I would take this with me if I was to go on vacation with my power wheelchair so I could press fit a bearing if it happen to wear out. It's going to be a lot easier to bring this than the press, the bearing press that I've made. I also want to point out to you that if you showed somebody this video or have articulate skills, this is something that you could do yourself without having to hire out the maintenance. Why I say this, or how I reach the conclusion, is that once you know what bearing part your wheelchair uses, you can literally go online and mail order them yourself. They're not, at least in my situation with the wheelchair, it's not proprietary to the wheelchair manufacturer. So it was a matter of getting the six digit code. Here's an example on the screen right now. And then I did a search online. I've found that there's bulk discounts available, meaning if you order more than 10 or more the shipping charge, especially if it's leaving the United States and coming to Canada where I live, becomes reasonable. Or, if you're someone that's able to plan ahead, the option exists sometimes to buy the bearing from Hong Kong or China. And when you look at the cost per unit, that is the cost of the bearings plus the cost of shipping, and then divide that by the number of bearings, it may be cheaper to bring it in from Hong Kong if you're planning ahead. And that's the key on this. There's also stores in where I live that sell bearings and you know it's no big deal getting your hands on them but the best price I've found is either buying in bulk or else mail ordering from China and I've done both. Finally, the other issue in changing the bearing is removing it from the wheelchair. I've made a separate video to show how I did this. So if this is a job you're taking on yourself, you're, I mean, you're, you're assuming responsibility for the whole thing, so you need to have confidence that you're going to be able to do this yourself. So I want to encourage you to watch this other video that will also be in the description um, to get 
the details of how I made my bearing puller. Thanks so much for the time that you spent with me today. Bye for now.